thoughts that keep me up at night. How long was I saying Pacific before somebody told me that I really meant specific? Is it bin day tomorrow or the day after? Will the ozone layer last long enough for me to actually start learning stuff like that? And should I be dressing my age? Look, I don't let everything keep me up at night anymore. God knows I'd never sleep, but having turned 30 during the great lockdown and having been able to tap out of having to pick a 30th birthday outfit and thereafter really any outfit for a very, very long time, coming out back into the world, feeling slightly different, looking probably a little bit more haggard than I was before, I do worry that actually this is an opportunity for me to change my style a little bit and that maybe I'm wandering out into the world and people being like why is that woman dressed as a toddler when she's clearly knocking on the door of 40 with a Smirnoff ice smuggled into her bag but on the other hand isn't my goal to be body neutral to not really care what anybody thinks and to fight against the very concept of aesthetic stereotypes in general including age as a bracket however i do i do feel different now i'm 30 I, I do and sometimes i think what you wear gives you permission to feel a certain way and i really want to embody the could give more of a fuck but don't wish to attitude i feel a lot of kind of older 30 year olds radiate and i i want that for myself i want that so today we're going to review some of the potentially ageist articles that i found when i was googling what should i wear in my 30s and maybe i'm going to attempt to make up some rules for myself. Now, housekeeping, if you haven't been here before, hi, my name's Lena. I make videos about whatever I am worrying about or angry about or excited about at the time. But over the last few years, I've been making loads of videos around sustainable fashion, or perhaps more accurately, I should call it a wardrobe that recognizes reality. And you can watch some videos up here about how I have been attempting that. If that sounds good to you and you want to live a life with more gumption in it, more shrewd, more spirited, do consider subscribing. I would love to see you back here. This video is sponsored by Loop Earplugs, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about those later. Let us get into the articles. <laughs> So first we're going to people who should know what they're on about. Vogue. The 15 essential items everyone should own by 30. Why do I get the awful feeling that this little <laughs> grubby goblin is going to fail at every turn? Let's go. Laura Jackson, what have you got for us? Okay, so apparently the 30s is a decade of self-assurance and enlightenment. <laughs> Haven't experienced any of that yet, but I'm sure it's coming. Personal style-wise, your 30s will arguably be your chicest decade to date chicest decade to date okay where classic wardrobe staples shine and proper fit is of ultimate importance now i'm already getting up against some stumbling blocks because i hate things that fit i like loose flowing stuff i'm not really a fitted jacket kind of person and i honestly would never describe my personal style as chic um and i don't know if that's something i can i can change for my 30s honestly that's that's part of my internal idiocy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to trade that in for nothing. But because it's been said that I do dress like a children's TV presenter, I'm, I'm willing to take some feedback and see and see what we can do. So the first thing I'm supposed to have in my wardrobe is the white t-shirt. Oh, not just one white t-shirt. I'm supposed to have a white tea capsule collection, a, co a collection of, of white t-shirts. Now I have something pretty negative to say about white t-shirts and, and I'm just gonna say this controversially above the board. I'm taking no prisoners, no take backs. I think white t-shirts are unsustainable as a concept. Nobody in this world can keep a white t-shirt for more than two years. I, even if you are somebody who doesn't spill everything you're trying to masticate down your boobs, I think that if you are a human breathing person, you're gonna get sweat stains, it's gonna get crumpled. I don't see a future for the white t-shirt in a logical planet friendly future. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that off the roster, but if you wanna hear more of my rant about that, there's a video about it up here. The polished topper. Worn as a layered piece or a standalone, a crisp button up. I do have a lot of big oversized shirts, so that could work, although I wouldn't call them crisp. Crispy, maybe. Crisp, no. The flattering fit jean. Now I have one preferred silhouette for jeans. It's it's this style. They're from Lucy and Yak, and I have quite a few pairs. Now I'm gonna tap out of the slim silhouette flattering fit dream, but I have found a type of jeans that I really like, so maybe I've got a point for that. 
the updated work tote. I'm sorry, but as somebody who uses public transport and doesn't have a car, tote bags are for people who want to get robbed. Just, just saying. The tote bags is not gonna happen for me. I'm gonna be a rucksack person for life. This is my more grown up version of the rucksack and that's as far as I am willing to go with that. But I think universally tote bags are a bit of a weird choice unless you exclusively drive a car and never walk through crowds. Am I a pessimist now? Oh my God, maybe I am in my thirties. The long lasting leather jacket. There's nothing long lasting about leather when it comes to the planet. So I'm gonna pass, but I do have this jacket I bought when I was 14 that somehow I still wear and still fits that is cut in the traditional leather jacket style. And I'm gonna keep that around in my thirties. I do not give a fuck. So I support the vintage closet heroes saying that you should have these these few vintage things, uh, maybe not this flasher coat, <laughs> but I like some of the other items. That that seems like a sensible win. The perfect white sneaker or trainer, as they are accurately called. <laughs> Where are you sneaking, brother? I have a pair of these that I'm actively trying to wear out. I was given them. I'm trying to get the use out of them that I should. But uh, again, anything white that's in contact with the floor, not a sustainable option. Maybe you live a cleaner and crisper life than me. Maybe you float above the ground when you walk. But for us mortals, white shoes, it's a no on all levels. <laughs> the work to play blazer. The concept of work to play, which has permeated my adulthood years when I've been reading magazines, is one of the most depressing concepts I've ever seen in fashion analysis. The idea that you can't play at work or you can't work while you're playing and this whole like dirty fantasy of being somebody who can turn up to work and then put a pair of earrings in and go on a night out and not look like you've just come from work as most normal adult people have. It's a pipe dream. I've never achieved it and I also feel really uncomfortable in blazers. I think if you are slightly bigger like me and you have some nice little little chicken wings. I'm a size 18 and I have never found a woman's jacket that accommodates for chicken wings. The fashion industry has a lot to explain but I don't have time to hear it. <laughs> So tapping out of blazers as a concept, to be honest, unless they are sequin blazers, then they can come through. I don't care. The everyday wear, wear black boots. I actually have some staple brown boots that I use. I feel like brown goes with much more, because I, I wear a lot of bright colors. I feel like brown is a, is a much better, like complementary supporting role color. But so I get the idea of having a staple shoe. I have one of those cocktail dresses. A cocktail dress is just a dress you can drink cocktails in. And to me, that's any dress. A little black swimsuit is a bit of a depressing thing as well, like because obviously you have to look skinny while you're swimming. Right, I think I'm done with this article. I, I get I get it, Vogue, I get what you want me to get, but I'm I'm not I won't I won't be joining you on the terrace, I'm afraid. Glamour, what have you got for us? I see that you have another journalist called Laura. All the Laura's are telling us how to dress this time. These are the new rules of getting dressed in your 30s. I like that they're being assertive. These are rules, no fun on that. But I like the point they've made that this is wardrobe tweaks, not wardrobe annihilation. So it's the idea that you have update a few bits in your wardrobe for your 30s, but you don't have to just throw everything away again. Love it. Gone are the days where dressing your age has been prescriptive. It is not the 1950s. Okay, I'm liking this idea a lot more. Pandora Sykes, a stylish girl. Uh oh, they've already gone in on the dungarees though. No, <laughs> this is sacrilege in this household. You can't, you will prize my dungarees from my cold, wrinkling dead fingers. I will be wearing them until my 80s. Perhaps you can no longer wear denim ones layered over a bandeau top, but how about a dressier pair in silk? Why make me pick one when I can have both? I like some of the style icons they're bringing up here. Of course, Iris Apfel, who can come close? Oh, this is sad. Laura saying that she realized she looked ridiculous in a per Peter Pan collar and she doesn't want to wear one anymore because she makes her feel like she's been dressed in mutton. And also stop wearing mini skirts. This is so sad. <laughs> I'm upset. Although she is in support of keeping sequin tops because happiness is anti-aging. Okay, and the last article we're gonna be looking at is from hellobombshell.com and I think we can agree, that's me all over. This week, another bombshell enters the villa. Du -du -du -du. <laughs> Number one, already feeling conflicted, ditch the graphic tees. Okay, from my perspective, I love a graphic tee. I will not be for aesthetic reasons giving up my graphic t-shirts, but from a sustainability point of view, they mostly age really badly. I think the only one that's kind of kept with me is my Amanda Palmer one, and I'll be wearing that until I die, but mostly they, they crack, they peel, 
I am not a printed on graphic tee fan, but I will not be, as this article suggests, investing in elegant blouses <laughs> instead, as if that could be an adequate substitute. This tip about upgrading your shoe game, I have to say that is something I agree with in general. I have actually opted for one pair of grandma sandals in the summer that I am not taking off and either a Doc Martin or um, these bright red boots that I wear a lot in the winter. Swap low rise and skinny jeans for high waisted jeans. I have been ahead of you before I even thought about being behind. I think many of us have been doing high waisted jeans for some time, so that's fine. Embrace white slacks or jeans. I hear you and I raise you this attempt. I had at that. It didn't go well. Ditch fake jewellery. That's something I definitely agree with and I'll be talking about in the second segment of this video. The only time running shoes are appropriate is when you're running with a friend. They are not appropriate for any other activity. <sighs> Say goodbye to bodycon? No, look, I do agree that things can be super sexy without being skin tight, but why does the joy have to be sucked out of every orifice as soon as you turn this arbitrary number? I know a lot of 30 year olds and 40 year olds and 50 year olds who look great in bodycon and um, frankly, I think that's rude. Bonus tip, wear what the hell you want. <laughs> that's like selling tickets to a first aid course and then at the end being like, but of course you could just let them die. <laughs> Like it kind of makes the rest of the article kind of redundant, but sure. Now, while I didn't learn a whole lot from those articles or some of the other ones that I've read online, I'm not willing to give up yet. I do think I would like to tweak my style without exorcising my personality. So let's see if I can come up with my own tips for myself. Here's what I do with most of the sponsorship offers that come my way. However, I am trying to move away from disposables in my life and loop earplugs make the most perfect swap for disposable earplugs that are making my 30s not only calmer, but more stylish. They are reusable, washable, noise reduction earplugs that come with four size options. And actually, I just have to show you. These are the quiet plugs. They take your life down by 27 decibels. And God, I wish I had them when I lived in a flat. I sleep with them in. Sorry. I sleep with them in. <laughs> almost every single night. And where they were a big lifesaver recently was I went to Greenbelt Festival and suddenly sleeping in a field of noisy, snorry strangers was just a pleasure. But the big hitters for me are these experience plugs. They take the world around you down about 18 decibels, but in a very specific way. When you wear experience plugs, you can still hear the world, but it takes the edge off it. I can still hear train announcements or the person next to me having a conversation with me at a bar, but it takes the sharpness off noise. And I wore these at the festival again, not only because they match my fetching outfits, but because when I was at a louder gig, they were just perfect for enjoying the music, but not getting too overwhelmed. Now I know that these come in really handy for people who are parents, people with ADHD, autism, freelancers who work in noisy cafes sometimes. And they've been a really big game changer for me as a writer, trying to block the world out a little bit and get into my own head. Loop elements have just dropped, which means four new colorways. I have the sweet lilac and still olive. This actually looks great with what I'm wearing right now. And these four new colors are limited edition. They're only making 6,000 of each. They come in these handy little carry cases. So I always have one of these attached to my keys just in case the world out there gets slightly overwhelming or, you know, I have a spontaneous festival trip. I'm in my 30s, I can do what I want. <laughs> if you would like to know more and protect your ears and your sanity, I'm gonna leave the link below for you to check it out. Thank you, Luke, for supporting the channel and making my 30s a little bit calmer. Okay, so I've had a little bit of a think. I've looked at what's already in my wardrobe, what I know in myself to be true, the stuff that I've learned about wardrobes in my 20s, and I'm looking at what maybe, not, not rules, not regulations, but guidelines I can set for myself in my 30s when I'm thinking about what to bring into my life and what to keep. Here's my working list. Jewelry that lasts. I've experimented a lot with jewelry in my 20s. Frankly, most of it has fallen apart and I can't have it 
it. We can't be having it. Not in 2022. So ideally I'd like my jewellery wardrobe to be very, very small. And I've finally picked a side as somebody who is neither warm or cool toned. <laughs> apparently, according to every optician I've ever met. I've decided that the majority of my jewellery is going to be silver. It kind of already is silver because I want to try and buy real silver that lasts, ideally recycled and ethically traded. Silver's cheaper. I don't think I can afford to be a gold girl at this point. So silver it is. Hopefully picking a side will ensure that all of my jewellery goes together and it doesn't have to be a massive wardrobe of stuff that doesn't all fit. When it comes to makeup, which I think is part of your wardrobe, I've decided that when it comes to eyeshadow, I really only have the spiritual capacity for a one and done. I've really enjoyed experimenting with eyeshadow in my 20s and it definitely kept me sane <laughs> during lockdown doing complicated eyeshadow looks. But really, most of the time, what actually makes me feel nice, pretty, is just one layer of eyeshadow at most, keeping my eyes pretty minimal and focusing on the lips because lipstick makes me feel like I have the permission to move through the world like the adult I actually am, whilst also being able to feel a bit playful and still myself. So makeup is an emphasis on the eyes. I also want less flattering <laughs> stuff. I'm thinking really getting the most wear out of my big wide leg trousers, not thinking so much about clothes that make me look slimmer. And as we march every day closer to the menopause and the climate crisis continues to ramp up, keeping cool is going to be my priority. One colour outfits I want to have a big emphasis on. I have a lot of clothes in different colours and frankly I think they look cool when I all wear the different shades of the same colour together. And also just like one and done outfits jumpsuits, dresses that just take care of the whole look, big statement pieces you can just throw on and not think about. I want to get zanier in my 30s, not tone it down, so I think a lot of the articles want you to do. I actually think as you get older you give less of a fuck and other people give less of a fuck and I want to give off that eccentric lecturer wears all the stuff together that she didn't really dare to wear in her 20s as often. I'm thinking there's a wizarding cloak in there that while you've probably seen in a few of my videos I probably only wore out in public a few times and I think that's a problem. These are the kinds of women I want to emulate. <laughs> when it comes to aging fashion. And I think I should purposefully strive towards that rather than just stumbling into it. And then finally, this is a weird one, more boob. Let me unpack that for you. I feel like a lot of the time I've been hiding my boobs. Not that there's anything wrong with hiding them, but I feel like sometimes it's felt, I felt more self-conscious about them than I should because I think I over-sexualize my own body. At the end of the day, they're just like hanging bits of flesh. They've never been, they've never been massive. <laughs> So I've never felt like I had to make them a feature of my outfits. But it's also just a lot of mental gymnastics trying to cover them up or when I want to get something or I want to make something and I'm like, oh, that show too much boob. Like, I just want to let that go. I want to be one of those breasty English teacher vibe women so that not that I'm purposely getting them out, but, but that I'm not over sexualizing myself when it comes to my decolletage, which I quite like and I have very little in my wardrobe that shows it. Even when it comes to strap tops, I'm a halter neck strap top person and I think that makes it sad. So I'm going to experiment with these new rules by showing you a few outfits and how I might apply them. The first being this dress, to be honest. If you've watched my how to build a wardrobe you'll actually wear video, you'll know that I'm very much in support of wrap things as a concept. I genuinely think they could save a lot of clothes from landfill and our bodies fluctuate in and out quite a lot. So wrap, I think should be the default <laughs> for a lot of clothes. I have a bra on that is covering a little bit, but I think this is the most daring I've been for a while <laughs> showing my boobs, which to some of you might feel like nothing, but to me feels, feels like a big something. Now let's accessorize this according to my rules. Okay, so this is the look. Okay, so what we've done here is we've smashed quite a few of the guidelines. I've kept the eye look incredibly simple and I've put on a kind of punchy purpley pink lip. I've got my Catch Reese big hoops on and their snake necklace, uh, both of which I absolutely bloody adore. Catch Reese are a small independent business that do loads of like planet minded stuff and I love them. And I also have this <laughs> ring made out of an upcycled spoon that I got from a fair or something? I don't remember. But I feel like rings on this finger make me feel grown up, 
but not aged. <laughs> I don't know how to say it better than that. You see how it used to be a spoon? That's the end of the spoon. And the other part where I'm following the guidelines is I've got a little bit of the chest area out, which I still feel a little bit self-conscious about, but again, I think I need to get over it. Another thing I forgot to say was that I feel like maybe my fear of like highlighting my boobs in any way isn't just to like draw the wrong kind of attention and get really annoying men coming up to me that I don't really want. But also we must fight through that in the name of <laughs> phasing out that kind of behavior. But also because I think I have this fear of looking mumsy <laughs> and maybe I need to accept that one I am gonna look a bit mumsy in my 30s already this summer two separate groups of teenagers have come up to me at festivals and asked me for tissues they've asked me for tissues the worst part was I actually did have tissues so Who's a mom now? But I think because I'm somebody who definitely definitely doesn't want children and doesn't want to be a parent even this idea of like looking like a mum, whatever the fuck that means, has like been playing with my head and I need to get rid of it, like I have boobs, it's fine. <laughs> Nobody panic. So anyway, this is my first outfit, let's try another. Okay, outfit two is a breathable <laughs> Canadian tuxedo. This is denim looking cotton, I know that denim is cotton, but you know what I mean. <laughs> It's a lightweight fabric that has a jeans kind of feel. This looks like a jumpsuit, but they're actually two items I bought separately, feeling very smug about it. I've worn these items separately in my 20s, but in my 30s, I've started wearing them together. I feel like the fashion advice of being like, oh, if you're gonna go loose on the bottom, then go tight on the top, or if you're gonna go loose on the top, tight on the bottom, has been railroaded by Billie Eilish, and for that, I, I thank her. I'm gonna take that and run with it. So I started wearing these together, and I really like it. And another thing I wanna start doing, that I didn't do in my 20s is like doing up the buttons. I think I had a little bit of school PTSD and also just I like, didn't want to look too frumpy again, whatever that means. But I think doing up the buttons on a situation like this can make it look a little bit more grown up and like purposeful, you know what I mean? Like I'm purposely put on this outfit because I have a purpose in life. <laughs> it's a lie, but a convincing one. So like doing it up like that with a bright lip and this is where the pizzazz <laughs> comes in. So some incredibly large statement earrings. Also doubles as a travel pillow. <laughs> Ideal. I really like this outfit because I still think that it reflects my silly personality, but it also gives me room to move <laughs> and do activities. I feel like I'm ready for a spontaneous judo session in this, but it also looks coherent and vaguely serious. And if I had to attend a meeting, it looks like I remembered the meeting was happening, which I never ever do. So overall, outfit two, massive success, if I do say so myself. Okay, this is the third item that I wanted to style. You've probably seen it before in videos because I've used it in various different videos, but I honestly want to wear it out more in my 30s. It's something that I bought in my early 20s thinking, this is who I want to grow, <laughs> grow into. And um, hasn't seen the light of day as much as I'd like it to have. So this time I'm going down the casual route. I've got some gray, jeans on. I've realised that my wardrobe is lacking any kind of tank top that shows my decolletage, so I'm wearing my thermal vest and it's very obvious when you come up close, so don't. I've tried this with a hair tie, I tried it with a dark lip, it all looked a little bit jarring, it wasn't quite right, and then I remembered I recently went back to my mum and dad's house and who among us doesn't have one of these <laughs> under their bed? <laughs> a tangle of naughties drapery beads from various charity shops, good. So let's see if I can make sense of this and if it can help us in our quest for 30s wardrobe success. Okay, of all the necklaces I was able to untangle, I feel like either this feather monstrosity <laughs> or this purple thing maybe makes the most sense. Maybe I'm going for like a brown and turquoise look. Better, but not great. Maybe if I lean into the eccentricities, they will be, things will be clearer. The flower earrings never fail me. Okay, I think this is, this is progress. <laughs> I still feel like I'm looking for how to make this work in the wild, but not every outfit can be a complete success. But I do think, if I just like walked into my local cinema and just said, hey, can I have two tickets to see the latest Emily Bronte film, please? They wouldn't bat too much of an eye. They wouldn't be like, this woman got lost on the way to the Renaissance Fair. Although maybe, <laughs> maybe. What if I shortened it? What if I sewed it so it was short? Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Do you think that we should bin the idea of age appropriate clothing 
all together, the whole thing's a complete mess, or do you think we can tweak it for our advantage? Are there actually good points to reassessing how you dress every decade and using clothes as a tool to shift your mindset consciously towards something you're more excited about? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much to Loop for sponsoring this video and to The Gumption Club for making this video and all of them possible. If you'd like to watch more sustainable fashion videos, oh, have I got some videos for you. Do subscribe if you would like to be here again. Don't forget, Frog Snog out.